This is the school bus project for my other channel. It's very large. And these are all the windows I took out of the bus. None of these are going back in because they're crappy, drafty bus windows. But I thought, instead of throw them away, why not I do something a little more creative with them? So I'm going to rip all the glass out of these windows and turn them into little personalized engraved plaques. That way, fans of the project can have a little personalized piece of the bus of their own, and I can use the sales of these plaques to help support this very expensive endeavor. As you might expect, the first step is to dismantle all these windows. So it goes from a pile of windows to a stack of glass and a bucket of aluminum. Now that I have this glass separated out, you might think the next step is to score it and break it into smaller pieces and get to engraving. But you'd be wrong because this glass is tempered. And you know what happens when you try to score and break tempered glass? <gasps> Nothing. It's very strong. But if you try extra hard, <laughs> it becomes a million pieces of glass. So before I can do anything with this tempered glass, I have to untemper it, otherwise known as annealing. The process of annealing glass is very similar to the process of annealing metal. You heat it up to a certain temperature and then let it cool down slowly. In the case of this tempered glass, it needs to be heated up to about 950 degrees Fahrenheit and slowly cooled down back to room temperature over a period of about eight hours or so. This is a process that would be very hard to figure out how to do if I didn't have a kiln. We got this thing over a year ago for pottery. It has never once been used for pottery, but it'll come in perfectly right now for annealing glass. All I have to do is stack the glass in there with some bricks so there's air space between each pane of glass, close the lid, and program it to heat up to 950 degrees Fahrenheit and then slowly cool down over eight hours. After spending all night in the kiln to think about what it's done, this glass has had a complete change of temperament and now I can work with it. This is actually three separate kiln loads. And by the way, if you were wondering what the kiln would do to the vinyl stickers that were on some of these windows, it totally vaporized it. To actually do the engraving, it's time for the return of the Auteur Master Blaster 2 Pro 2 Furious. Now this is a diode laser, and diode lasers cannot engrave glass. They work on a visible way to think the light that passes straight through the glass without interacting with it. However, if you coat the glass in something the laser can interact with, like black paint, then the laser can engrave this black paint and the heat from that engraving will etch the glass directly below it. I've already tried this out and unfortunately, the results are spectacular. Now why is that unfortunate? Because I wasn't originally planning to engrave the glass plaques with this laser. This is a diamond drag bit. It's spring-loaded, and as the name suggests, there's a little pointy diamond in the tip of it. This bit mounts into the collet of the router on my CNC, but the router isn't on during its operation. The CNC just presses the bit down into the glass, or whatever you're engraving, and drags it along. Hence the name. This is how I was planning to engrave the glass. The reason I'm not using this is because here's the results from the laser. Here's the results from the diamond drag bit. The diamond drag bit results, while passable, are substantially worse. And the reason for this is quite obvious. The laser uses a pinpoint accurate laser. This is a big dumb scrapey pencil. As you can see from these window holding templates that I've already made, I've already gone to a bunch of work setting up the CNC router for batch window engraving before I found out the results from the laser were too much better to ignore. But this wasn't wasted effort because I can still use this setup with this diamond drag bit to etch the score lines to break the glass into the little four by six rectangles that I need. This is the paint I'm gonna coat the glass with. It's tempera paint, black tempera paint. Not only is it super cheap, but it's water-based and crucially, water-soluble. So once I'm done with all the engravings, I can just rinse this paint off in a bucket of water. To put the paint on the windows, I first thinned it out with water and then I'm gonna be applying it using an HVLP gun. You might notice the windows look a little dirty. That's because I didn't bother washing them first. There's really no point. Well, that's not gonna work. Apparently the diamond drag bit doesn't engrave deep enough to actually be a scoring line. Even if I use the little breaky doodad arm of my tile cutter here, it still won't break on the scoring line. Yeah, see, absolutely nowhere near it. I thought maybe the problem is that I'm trying to engrave through paint. Maybe the diamond drag bit's getting clogged up or something. So I scored a piece without paint and no. No, that is not the problem. The score line just isn't deep enough, which means that I'm gonna have to manually cut all of these rectangles out using my tile cutter here. <laughs> the glass scoring and breaking was going very poorly, so I went out and bought a wet tile saw. 
It's not very good, but it gets the job done. This is the blade it came with, and it was causing a lot of chip out on the cut edge of the glass, so I went out and bought a specific glass cutting blade, and now the results are pretty good. Even though this table saw was a significant upgrade, I was still getting a lot of chipped edges and corners with this tile saw. So I returned it and bought a sliding tile saw instead. The big advantage with this type of saw is that I can vary the depth of cut. So instead of making a through cut, I can make a deep score line, which significantly reduces the number of chips or breaks. Post-processing, the cut edges after leaving the wet tile saw aren't exactly as smooth. There's some chipping, there's some chipped corners, there's some jagged edges and general danger points. Now there's a lot of ways to smooth and shape glass. Most of them are terrible. The horrible method I've chosen is a standard belt sander coupled with silicon carbide sanding belts that can effectively sand down the glass. Now this method has a lot of downsides. It's dry, so it generates a lot of heat and glass dust. That's why I've added this little cardboard scoop here and 3D printed this adapter so I can hook up my dust extractor to it to suck up the maximum amount of glass dust possible. And these sanding belts don't last all that long. I can get through about 24 or so pieces of these glass before I need to replace the belt. That's why I bought so many of these sanding belts. But the benefit of this is when I'm done with this glass project, I can use this belt sander for other things. If I were to buy a wet diamond grinder, I'd probably never use it again. I'll start out at 120 grit to do any rough shaping. Then I did final shaping and finishing at 240 grit. If possible, I left the factory edges of the glass completely untouched. I've got a little bit of an issue here. My diode laser engraves the glass perfectly fine and the results are lovely, but it's slow. Much slower than I was expecting. I did a test batch with six plaques on the bed here and engraving those six plaques with my logo and some test names took six hours, one hour per plaque. With as many plaques as I have to do, if I were to engrave a solid 12 hours a day, it would take about 35 days to engrave all the plaques, which is obviously not an option. Now I did some playing around. When I did the test batch, I ran the laser head at a thousand milliliters per minute. And I did a test sample where I played around with the speeds and I found out I can get the laser head speed up to 3000 millimeters per minute before the frosted glass effect starts to fade away a little bit, which is a substantial improvement. That's three times faster, but that's still like 10 solid days of engraving. So it's still not an option. So what I've done is I've made a rather large purchase. I bought a proper floor standing 60 watt CO2 laser. And no, this has no affiliation with Ohm Tech. This is what I chose and I paid for it with my own money, like a big boy. But why? Well, outside of this project, tons of reasons. I've got a new toy to play with and I can do so much with it. But for this project specifically, CO2 lasers do not operate on a visible wavelength of light. They can directly engrave the glass, which means I don't have to paint it first, which is a nice and huge time savings. And this is faster than the diode laser. Not just a little bit, the diode laser, I said I can engrave glass up to 3000 millimeters per minute. This one, I can engrave glass at 500 millimeters per second. That's 10 times faster. This can engrave faster than the diode laser can even move. To control the engravings, I'm using light burn. As you can see, I've got the plaques set up in a grid, but there's no text here. I could input the text to each one of these plaques in light burn, but I'd have to format each plaque individually and that'd be annoying, so I'm not going to do that. For the text, I've set up the same grid in vCarve because vCarve has a tool called write text in a vector box. As I write the text, it formats the text to fit inside the vector box. So as I continue typing, it gets smaller and it resizes and it auto centers and it's fantastic. So this is how I'm inputting the text. And then when I'm done, I can just hide the name boxes, export the whole page as a DXF, import that into Lightburn, do a little bit of resizing and boom, because the text auto resizes, technically there is no character limit. I have advised on the Etsy listing that you limit it to 14 characters per line and limit it to three lines, but really there is no limit as long as you're okay with your text being tiny. Now I have the process for engraving the glass down, but I can't engrave anymore because each one is engraved to order and the orders won't exist until after this video comes out. Each one you've seen me engrave so far are from my top tier patrons who get a glass plaque automatically just for being so awesome. People like Dinkpods, Giannis Alberding, and Ransom Taggart. Names I specifically handpicked because those are really cool names. Anyway, now I need to move on to something that I can complete in entirety before the orders come in. The little stands that these plaques are sitting on. Which I'll be making out of this stack of a frickin' mahogany. I started off by planing each board to a uniform thickness then I jointed one edge for a square reference. 
Then it was over to the table saw to cut everything down into strips. And finally I could cut the strips into blocks at the miter saw. Now for the fun part, I chamfered all the edges at the router table for every single block. I cut the slot in the blocks to hold the glass at the table saw. Then I sanded every block at the belt sander. See, I told you I'd use it for other stuff. I also laser engraved the bottom of each stand and finished each one off with a spray coat of lacquer. For the engraving, I wrote piece of the bus, cause that's what it is. And for the first batch of these, I put my name, the channel name and the date, but for later iterations, I put just the logo of my channel and the date. And by the way, between these two pieces, you can see how much time has passed between the beginning of this project and now. And that's it. Now the process for making these glass plaques wasn't hard, but the repetition was awful. I don't know how many of these glass plaques there are. I haven't counted them yet, but I know there's at least a couple hundred and it was awful. So bad, in fact, that for the first time ever, I hired someone to do that work for me. I had a friend come along right place, right time and say, hey, I could use a little bit of money. Is there anything I can help you with around the shop? And I said, yeah. So I hired them to do it and I'm glad I did because it took them three days of solid sanding just for the glass plaques. All the while I was working on a video in here, not having to sand glass plaques individually. Each one of these plaques is handmade, aside from all the lasered bits, and therefore each one is very different. And this tempered and then annealed glass doesn't work as well as regular float glass. A lot of the glass pieces broke or chipped in some irreparable way, so I had to throw away a lot of glass. Some of these plaques are not the same size as others because one of the edges got so chipped up that I had to cut it away, so it's therefore shorter. Some of them have rounded corners because one of the corners got chipped so badly that I had to round it to blend it in. And some of them still have chips on the edges because I looked at it and thought, well, I don't know what to do about that, but I don't want to throw the glass away, so I kept them in there. Each one of these is different. Because this glass is all from a bus, it's all full of character. Not all of these, but a lot of these pieces have a factory edge or two. And you can tell the factory edge because of the faint line next to the border. What that is, is all of these glass panes were held in by an aluminum frame and this bus spent a lot of time driving down gravel roads. The dust from those gravel roads got up in between the glass pane and the aluminum frame and the vibrations of the bus etched a faint line around the edge. But my absolute favorite pieces are the corner pieces that have the branding from the original glass factory that made all these glass panes. If you get one of those, that's a special piece. And I don't have any in front of me, but the pieces that were made from the emergency exit windows still have the faint outline of the vinyl lettering that was on the windows that said, do not block emergency exit. These plaques you see in front of me, I made for my top tier patrons just for being so awesome. And a few other people I've thrown in just for fun. If you're watching this video, these have already been shipped out. But if you aren't one of my patrons and you want one of these glass plaques for yourself, there's a link in the description below this video where you can order a piece of the bus engraved with whatever you want within a character limit, of course. Now this probably goes without saying, but since all of this glass came from my bus, there's a limited quantity of these. So if you want one of these, you better hurry up and order one because once these are sold out, they're gone. So that's the little side project I've been working on for way too long. I legitimately thought when I started this project that it would just be a little side project. It would only take me a couple of days. Boy, was I wrong. But anyway, I had a lot of fun making it. It was a fun little experiment in making and shipping out physical items. So if you want one, go ahead and order one. You'll be helping me out with my biggest project and you'll get a little fun little piece of memorabilia. I said little like five times in that sentence. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching.